Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The book contains 230 problem solving questions. It has 174 data sufficiency questions. We already solved every single math problem from this book. If you are interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Right now we are in the process of redoing the problems and we are on page number 177. Please turn to it. Page number 177, the very first problem that you will see there in the first column, number 178. Let's see what it has to say. Number 178. Number 178. It's important that you have the book in front of you. Do you understand? As I have reminded you several times in the past, do not depend on my reading the problem to you because I do not read the problem verbatim. I do not read it verbatim. T-I-M, verbatim, word for word. Do you understand? I just read the part uh, that, uh, that pertains to our actual work. So it looks like we have 300 subjects who are participating in the experiment to reduce the fear of height. 40% we are told in the experiment, when they were subjected to this particular experiment, we are told 40% of them had 40% uh, uh, experience sweaty palms. We are told that 30% 30% experience vomiting and 75% experience drowsiness. And we have a total of total of 300 subjects. 300 subjects participated in the experiment. The very first thing we're going to do is is to kill 200 of those people. The 300 that is given to us is just to be annoying, just to be the pain in the area. It serves no purpose. Because if you want to keep that 300, then you have to waste your time doing it out here, multiplying everything this by 3, you will end up at 120 and 9. It serves no purpose. Do you understand? Let's just pretend that there are 100 people in the experiment, not 300. And whatever the hell that they're asking us at the end, whatever the bloody thing that we're looking for, when we find it, we're just going to multiply it by 3. All right? Let's see what going, what's going on here. So what exactly are they looking for? It says, so we have that 40% experience sweaty palm, 30% we, we are told experience vomiting, 75% experience dizziness. In our case it's not 75%, it's just 75. If all the, oh, if all the subject experience at least one of these effects, all of them experience at least one of these effects, in other words we are told that none experience, none experience no effect. None, none of the people experienced no effect, at, le at least the, everybody was, uh, was experienced at least one effect or maybe two or all three of the effects. Let's keep on going. And 35% of the subjects experienced two of these effects. All right, 35% experienced two. Let's make a note someplace. 35 had two effects. All right, let's get, let's get going. So the very first thing we're going to do here, before, because of the fact that we're dealing with three different, uh, three different, uh, three different, three, three different quantities here, we have to first of all establish some way of distinguishing all three of them right from the very beginning. So let's do that. We're going to use x to represent the number of people, people who experienced. Let's put it here, number who experienced only one effect. We're going to use Y for the people who experienced two effects. People who, who experienced exactly two effects and no more than that. And we are told that Y equals 35 right here. 35 had two effects right here. So Y equals 35. Let's make a note of it. That is given to us. 
we're going to use letter Z to, to represent people who had three effects. Number of people who had all of these three effects during the experiment, they went through vomiting, they went through the dizziness spell, they went through uh, sweaty palms, uh, they experienced sweaty palms, they had all three of these effects, they had, they had the whole, the, they had the whole, uh, uh, the, the, all, all the fun. And we're going to represent Z for those of it. So let's, let's see what we can do. Let's add up these figures and we are no longer dealing with percentages, these are numbers. Let's add them up. So we have 5 here, 4 plus 3 is 7, 4 plus 3 is 7, 7 plus 7 is 14, 145. Now the question is, what does that 145 represent? This 145 represents, this 145 represents the people who had one effect and the people who had two effects, but the people who have two effects are counted twice. They are double counted in this number. And finally, the number of people who had three effects. Well, the number of people who had three effects are counted three times. It comes straight from the Venn diagram here. Here is our Venn diagram. The people who fall in this people who fall in this area, obviously, where they are counted, they are counted first as the people who are having sweaty palms. Then the same people are counted again as people who are having vomiting, and they count it again one more time as people who are having dizziness. So this this area here, which is the common area to all three of these, are counted three times. So this number number of people who had all three effects are counted three times in this total. This total represents the number of people who had one effect, the number of people who had two effects, the number of people who had three effects. Obviously, this 145, that's what it represents. The people who had one effect, two effects, or three effects, because when you and, and therefore, it is x plus 2 times y plus 3 times z. That amount has to equal 145. That's our first equation. That's our first equation. Where can we continue our work? Where can we continue our work? I should have drawn this bloody thing here. Where is it? We, we're not going to leave it like this because we know that y equals 35. Let's put it in there. So we get x plus 2 times 35 plus 3 times z plus plus 3 times z I hope you can tell the difference between my 3 and my z equals 145 and therefore x plus 3 times z equals 145 minus 70 140 minus 70 is 70 so it's going to be 75 so that's our first equation that's our equation number 1 but we also know but we also know the total number of subjects is 100. We also know that the total number of subjects is 100, which means the number of people who had only one experience, one effect, and the number of people who had two effects, and the number of people who had all three effects. There are some people who had two effects, there are three, some people who had all three of the effects, but all of these people combined cannot, cannot exceed 100. The 100 is what we had total. That's the total number of subjects. So there is our second equation. Technically, this should be the first equation because that's what that's what we started out with. Just which we should start out with, and and this is something where we build. So let's do it. We have two equations there. See what we can do there. Again, we know y equals 35. We're going to put it in here. Y equals 35, which means which means that x plus z must equal 65. This is our first equation. Let's put them here. I'm, I need the room, so I'm going to erase all of this thing. So remember, x represents the number of people who had one effect, y represents the number of people who had two effects, and z represents the number of people who had all of the three effects. Uh, I erased it, but in the Venn diagram it shows up as the common area among all three of them. So there you go, there is the two equation here. Equation number one tells us that x plus z equals 65, and second equation tells us that x plus 3z equals 75. x plus z, this is a plus z, this is plus, let's subtract, let's subtract everything. So x drops out and we end up at z minus 3z, which is going to give us negative 2z, and 65 minus 75 is going to give us negative 10, and therefore z equals 5. The number of people who had all three effects is 5, but the question is asking us, what is the question asking? How many of these subjects experience exactly one of these effects? They're looking for not the value of z, they're looking for the value of x. So let's find it. Right here, we can use this one, we can use this one, let's use this one, it's easier. 
So if z is 5, then x must be 60. That's it. This implies that x equals 60. Now remember, this tells us that this, this tells us that 60, 60 out of one out of 100 experienced one effect. 60 out of 100 had had one effect, but we do not have 60. Uh, we do not have 100 people in the experiment. We mustn't forget. We have 300 people. We have 300 people, and therefore it is 60 times 3. It's 180. Our answer is not 60. Our answer at the end, that's the adjustment we have to do at the end. At the end, just simply multiply the final answer, the punchline, by 3. So it turns out that exactly 180 people out of the 300 had only exactly one, one effect. The others had more than one, either two or three. You understand? Let's do the next one, number 179. But you're going to have to excuse me for about five seconds. I'm going to, I'm going to get out of frame because I have a little bit of a runny nose. I'm still here. I'm not going anywhere. Number 179. Let's see what we have there. Number 179. Number 179 is a silly question. We have a mixture. A mixture which contains A, P, and G in the ratio of 6, 5, and 2. And the total we are told is 39 pounds. And the question is how many how many more pounds of A do we have? How many more pounds of A do we have compared to G? How many A? What does A and G stand for here? I don't know. Apples and grapes. How many more pounds of apples do we have in this mixture compared to the number of pounds of grapes we have? In other words, what we are looking for is A minus G. This is what we are looking for. But remember, A is six parts and G is two parts. So we are looking for the value of four parts. Question is how much is four parts? That's what they are looking for. How much is four parts? Well, six. 6 plus 5 is 11, 11 plus 2 is 13, 13 parts equal 39 pounds, 13 parts equal 39 pounds, that tells us that one part, this implies that one part must equal 3 pounds, because 3 times, 30, three times, uh, 30, uh, three times 13 is 39, so one part equals 3 pounds, the difference between number, number of pounds of grapes and a uh, number of pounds of apples and grapes is 4 parts, and since one part is four, one part is three pounds, four part must be twelve pounds. That's all. Three times rather not four times three pounds, which is twelve pounds. We have twelve more pounds of apples compared to grapes. Let's do the next one, shall we? Number one hundred and eighty. Number 180. Number 180, we are told that m raised to negative 1 equals negative 1 third. And the question is, how much is m raised to negative 2? Oh, that's just damn silly. That's just bloody silly. Just square both sides. That's all. Just square both sides. And when we square both sides, m raised to negative 1 raised to second power is m raised to negative 2. And that's just simply negative 1 third squared. Negative 1 third squared is just negative 1 third. I don't, I, don't, I don't even know why I'm doing it out like this in a baby way. We don't have to do this step to see immediately that negative 1 third times negative 1 third is 1 9. It's positive 1 9. The answer is positive 1 9. Let's do the very last one on the page, number 181. Number 181. Number 181, we are told that 
these are some of the vocabulary words we came across in yesterday's lecture. Now when I say yesterday's lecture, we're talking about 343 for the problem solving questions. In, in day number 343, we came across these words in, in, during the lecture. Uh, oh, verbatim we talked about just now today. I might as well tell you when we learned it, even though it's a very simple word, but it may not be. One never knows. One never knows. That's the whole point. Verbatim simply means word for word. Verbatim. Number, day number 73. If you're interested in improving your vocabulary, just type in, just type in GMAT vocabulary words, day 73, and you will come across the video where we learned about verbatim. Caveat or caveat, depending on uh, depending on the person, they are both correct pronunciations. Caveat, which is simply means a warning, a forewarning, a, 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 a disclaimer. Not, N A U G H T. Not, which is a synonym of cipher. The brook, which is something we learned on day number four. In case you are wondering what that what that was all about. Number one eighty one. In number one eighty one, we are told that M is positive. We are told that X is. We are told this, x is m percent of y. Question is, y is what percent of x? Now listen, there are two ways we can go about this problem, as always. There are two ways we can go about it. One is the traditional way, because it's an algebra problem, because, it's because of the fact it's an algebra problem, therefore we have two options. One option is to solve it as an algebra problem, solve it algebraically, classically, traditionally, in an orthodox manner, in, a in, in, in an academic manner, in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an algebraic manner, as I said. Another, another method, another way, another option that we have at our, at our, at our disposal is to plug in numbers, is to pl plug in numbers for the variable and convert this algebra problem into a simple arithmetic problem. Let's do it that way. Let's do the plugging in method first. Let's do the plugging in. Plug in numbers. So we are told that x is m percent of y. Let's plug in some nice number, okay? Let's pretend that y x is 10 and 10, let's say is 25 percent of 40. Would you agree? Would you agree that 10 is 25 percent of 40? Of course you would. Why wouldn't you? In other words, wherever we see x from now on, x is going to take the value of 10, wherever we see m, we're going to replace it with 25, wherever we see y, we have to replace it by 40, because that's what we're plugging in here. And the question simply is, and the question simply is, y is what percent of x? Well, our y is 40, so the question is, 40 is what percent of x, which is 10? Can you tell me 40 is what percent of, 40 is what percent of 10? 40, 40 of course is 4 times 10. And therefore, and therefore, 40 is 400 percent of 10. There you go, there is our answer. 400 is our answer. Our answer is 400. 40 is 400 percent of 10. Now what we have to do is go through all the answer choices, go through all the answer choices, Wherever we see x, we replace it with 10. Wherever we see m, we replace it with 25. Wherever we see y, we replace it with 40. Until we come upon something that gives us 400. Let's do it, shall we? Answer choice A says, answer choice A says 100 times m. Well, 100 times 25, 100 times 25, obviously, is not going to give us 100 times 25. It's not going to give us 400, is it? Answer is not A. B says, 1 over 100 times n, which is even more silly. We're looking for 400. We're looking for 400. C says 1 over m. 1 over m is just 1 over 25. In the real exam, we wouldn't even waste our time writing it out. It's not going to give us 400. D says 10 over m. 10 over m is 10 over 25. That's not going to do it. The answer has to be E. E says 10,000 over m. Let's see what 10,000 over m gives us. 10,000 over m, m is 25, m is 25, and 10,000 can be written as 10 times 100, 10 times 100 over 25. Why do we write down as 10 times 100? Well, 10 times, one, 10 times 100 is, is 1,000, it's not 10,000, we need 10,000, it's going to be 100 times 100. 
100 times 100, which is just as well, because otherwise we wouldn't have gotten what we needed, which is 400 is what we need. Divide top and bottom by 25, which is why we broke it up, because it's easy to see 100 is 4 times 25. So now we have 100 times 4, 100 times 4 is 400 is exactly what we're looking for. The answer is E. So this is one way of doing it. This is one way of doing it. Now, if you like, if you insist on it, if you help, if you help bent on it, I'm going to show you the classical way, the algebraic way, the conventional way, the orthodox way, the academic way. But it's not something that I would recommend that you do in the real exam. Do you understand? It's not worth it. Just plug in numbers. Let's do it algebraically here. The answer is E. I need the room, so we're going to have to erase all of this thing. I don't want to erase this thing because we might be able to see the classical work and the non-classical work next to each other in a juxtaposition. If we did not learn the word juxtaposition, I want to make a note of it. We did not. I'm going to make a note here and we're going to learn it next time. Juxtaposition simply means putting two things next to each other. Let's do the classical way. So here's the classical method, the traditional method. We are told that x is m percent of y, which is same as x is means equal, m percent means over 100, of means times y. If we solve this equation for y, we solve this equation for y and we find that 100 times x over m equals y. And now the question is y is what percentage of x? So let's do it here y is what percent of x? y is what percent of x? Let's not put, let's not put, a, we can't use x for the unknown. We can't use x for the unknown. I realize we have x here. Let's use p for the percent. Let's use, let's use letter p for percent. So that's it. And what we are solving for, what we are solving for is P. So P equals 100 times Y, 100 times Y over X. But remember, Y is this quantity right here. We need the room, so we're going to have to erase all of this thing. And that is same as 100 over X times Y, which is 100 times X, 100 times X over M. You see what's going on? x drops out and we end up the same answer as before which is 100 times 100 100 times 100 is 10,000 over m which is the exact same answer that we found to be the right answer when we didn't do it in the classical manner when we plugged in numbers that was the end of that page I'm going to stop here today I'll see you tomorrow okay bye now